Are you as obsessed with true crime podcasts as I am? Have you thought about starting your own true crime podcast? Well, in this video, I will dissect two of the most popular true crime podcasts. Uh. Crime Junkie and My Favorite Murder. I murdered you. I'll talk about the different elements that have made this podcast go viral so you can incorporate these elements into your podcast. Hello and welcome to the Bad Sound School. We are podcasters, YouTube creators, and I'm Veronica, your true crime freak. Our channel is a one stop for all things podcasting and video. We post videos every week. So if you're thinking about launching your very own true crime podcast, you better subscribe to our channel. At the time I'm recording this video, there are two true crime podcasts claiming a spot at the top charts week after week consistently, Crime Junkie and My Favorite Murder. I'm a regular listener to both podcasts, but beyond that, I find it fascinating how they can get consistently millions of downloads every month and how they have created a community of raving fans, myself included. So in this video, I will dissect the success of these two shows. You'll learn why true crime is a perfect topic for a podcast and how they combine social causes with their passion for true crime. I'll be talking about format, workflow, and promotion, and all the little nuances you'll need to know to launch a killer true crime podcast, no pun intended. But first, let's talk about the wild success that these two podcasts have experienced in the last few years. In a Forbes article published in 2020, My Favorite Murder was named as one of the highest paid podcasts along with the Joe Rogan experience, and also one of the most listened to podcasts with a consistent 35 million downloads a month. Its counterpart, Crime Junkie, is fiercely competing for those listeners, reporting 31 million downloads a month. Both podcasts have turned into business enterprises, making consistently six to seven figures and growing into big podcast networks. So what has made these two podcasts explode and become a phenomenon in the podcast industry? Let's break it down. Let's talk about the topic first. In my opinion, when it comes to true crime, there are three different types of people. Those who don't like true crime, those who like true crime but don't like to admit it, and those who are not afraid to embrace their weird like me and go all out with their fascination for this type of stories. People interested in true crime are everywhere in large numbers, and a great number of them are podcast listeners. To prove this, at the time I'm publishing this video, half of the top 10 podcasts on Apple Podcasts are true crime. Crime. Whether they like to hear the stories to learn how to stay safe, to sympathize with victims and their pain, or to feel some sense of justice, your potential true crime listeners are out there and they are ready to get their true crime fix. Another reason why true crime is such a good topic for a podcast is the storytelling component. Audio storytelling is at the heart of podcasting, and true crime stories have the power to keep your listeners engaged and at the edge of their seats until the end of the episode. What these four women have in common is that they are great storytellers. They gather all the facts and information about the case and tell the story, adding their own personalities and reactions. So, if you have a fascination for true crime and can't get enough of the stories, you will be hitting the two key points when finding the right topic for your podcast. One, you feel passionate about the topic and enjoy talking about it. And second, the topic is something people are highly interested in. True crime is also a great topic because crime never stops. There are crimes committed every day and they've been committed since we have record of it. The second factor of their success is that both podcasts go beyond just telling a story. For example, Crime Junkies Mission centers in advocacy, crime awareness, and bringing light to unsolved cases. Crime Junkie has donated to date $643,000 to different causes involving crime victims and crime investigation. My Favorite Murder centers on the victims of the crimes and not the perpetrators. Their most listened episodes are stories about surviving victims and the trauma experienced by them as individuals, their families, and the communities. As a podcast host, you get to control every aspect of the production of your show. 
from planning all the way to publishing. So you get to decide what will be your podcast mission and which social causes you want to support with your show. There's a lot of controversy around true crime. And just as there are passionate fans and supporters, there are also opponents who think this type of media is making a profit at the expense of the victims. This is why it's important that you know from the beginning your mission and be considerate of the victims and the families involved in the cases. The other aspect that makes these two podcasts so unique and different from each other is the host's personalities and the style they give to their shows. It's one thing to research a case and get all the facts, and a totally different thing is to tell it in front of the microphone in a way that keep your listeners entertained. The women in these two shows know how to keep you at the edge of your seat with their storytelling skills and personalities. After listening to a few episodes, you start thinking you're just hanging out with your weird friends who share the same obsession for the morbid. Okay, so let's compare the styles of each show. Crime Junkie has a matter of fact and straight to the story style. If you're familiar with Crime Junkie, you know that Ashley Flowers, one of the hosts of the podcast, tells the story while the co-host, Brie Prawat, reacts to it with similar questions their listeners may have while listening to the story. Although there are some moments when they break character and share personal details of their lives, the episodes center on the story. This gives Crime Junkie a more journalistic feel. My Favorite Murder, on the other hand, has a totally different vibe. The hosts, Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark, use self-deprecating jokes and share personal details of their lives in a hilarious way. They have a natural skill at being great entertainers, and something that stands out is that these women are bold in their comments and are not afraid to express their reactions. They are weird and funny and attracted to the morbid, and this is why their audience identifies with them. I tell this to my clients and students all the time. You may find another hundred true crime podcasts out there, but what makes your podcast different from the rest is you. Your personality and the way you tell stories and the way you interact with your listeners, your mission, your weirdness, and all of the things that set you apart. So as much as you can, bring your personality to the table. But success doesn't come overnight, and producing a true crime podcast is time consuming. But these women are not afraid of hard work. In a recent interview, Crime Junkie host Ashley Flowers mentioned that it takes her about 30 hours to research and write each episode. And this is without adding the time it takes to record, edit, publish, and promote the podcast, as well as other activities like live events. A well-produced true crime podcast is well-researched and fact-checked, as well as well-written. So cutting corners and printing the story from an article you found on the internet and written it verbatim can get you in trouble for copyright infringement. In fact, in 2019, Crime Junkie received several accusations for copyright infringement, and as a result, the producers and hosts had to take down a few of their episodes. So, as much as you can, credit your sources. Something that is also important is to fact check the story using different sources, reputable sources. Don't fill in the gaps with your own assumptions. There are plenty of articles, research, videos, and podcasts online to put together the story. Writing is also a crucial element of having an awesome true crime podcast. The last element crucial for their success is their listeners and how they have built that community around their podcast. Just as we call the podcasters in our community podskis, My Favorite Murder calls their fans murderinos, and Crime Junkie calls them Crime Junkie. Both podcasts have created a loyal fan base who listen to every single episode they release, follows them on social media, completely fills up venues at their live events, and in the case of the murderinos, they even tattoo the stay sexy and don't get murdered punchline onto their bodies. They spend more time interacting with their fans than they do making the podcast. This is probably the most important thing to remember that many podskis don't plan into their podcasting workflow, and that is to engage and interact with your listeners. Your podcast is only one of the many elements involved in growing a community and going viral with your podcast. Okay, creepy podski, what do you think? Are you ready to start your own true crime podcast? Do you want the Pod Sound School to help you? 
What if I told you that you could launch your own true crime podcast in only seven days? We just completed our brand new podcasting course, the seven day podcast fast track, where each day you get specific video lessons, checklists, and assignments to prepare you and empower you with all the skills and information you need to launch an impressive podcast in seven days. You can find out more about the course by visiting podcastingsmart.com slash fast track. And I will also leave the link in the description box below this video. And before you go, two things. No olviden hacer la tarea. And if you know what's good for you, you better subscribe to our channel. Spooky casting, amigo. Check the both. Loud. <laughs> 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 the victims and families involved in the I'm gonna murder you <laughs> with similar questions as <laughs> <laughs>